Hello, Zero K fans, and welcome to Nanolate Z Dawn. I'm your host, Shadow Fury333, and we're gonna have a couple matches tonight. There were a lot of requests that I got on Saturday, like a couple days ago, and I figured I'd just do a special Tuesday cast to cover some of them, because I didn't really have a huge amount of time on Saturday, and even today I'm not feeling the most time available. That is not a word. I will have to think about a word. I do not feel like I especially have a huge amount of time, so we are gonna be only doing a couple of these. But the first one is going to be Stuart98 versus Captain Nutbar, because Stuart98 wanted to see what advice I had for them. Although, admittedly, Captain Nutbar also played, so Captain Nutbar will probably get some things said about how they played. Anyway, let's see how they played. Stuart going for the Shieldbot Factory, while Captain, Captain Nutbar goes for the Spiderbot Factory. And Shieldbot versus Spiderbot on Living Lands is a matchup that I. I'd have a hard time placing, actually. Overall, I would say that Shieldbot is not a bad choice against Spiderbot. But Spiderbot is also not likely to be completely wrecked by Shieldbot. I mean, Shieldbot going for rogues would help. But I don't... I don't know. With Cloakie, for instance, you'd go for Rockos, and that would deal with the Venoms and Redbacks right away. And then to deal with Hermits, you just have Glaives. And I would say that for Spiders, fighting Cloakie can be a bit of an uphill battle depending on how the clicky player plays. Shieldbot, on the other hand, it just feels even to me. I mean, Venoms deal with bandits fairly effectively, but bandits deal with Venoms also fairly effectively and don't have to worry about it. And you have Dirtbaggers to cover for that fire. Although we don't see any Venoms anyway, Captain Up are actually not building any units, focusing entirely on getting their economy up very early on. On the other hand, Stuart 98 pushing their commander forward, gambling on getting their economy with their worker, but basically delaying their economy in order to take territory. In fact, Gambling their economy to try to, from the looks of it, take the entire center, if not go for a commander assault as it is. Their commander is already level 2. Light particle beam straight off the bat. As well as the dirt bag right in front of the factory, presumably just to block it when it dies, but against spiders? I mean, for one thing, that. Oh, it doesn't even work. I mean, not surprised, that shouldn't work. That's something that I was fairly certain was patched. Using dirt bags to block factories is a super old strategy. That only really worked against light vehicles. It currently blocks, if it's right in front of the factory, everything from factories that are built like the Shieldbot, where there's only one exit. Spiderbot, on the other hand, I'm not sure of the yard map. I'm not sure of the yard map exactly, because the visual factory here, like what we see here, isn't necessarily descriptive of the collision map used to figure out where units can go when they leave. However, spiders are, for one thing, all terrain, so putting something in front of there is irrelevant. And for another, if the yard map does match the visuals, spiders don't have to worry about a mound right in front of the factory. They can go off to the sides. Anyway, Stuart has set up the defenses, so they do kind of have some control over the center a little bit, but this is tenuous. Captain Umbar probably won't go around the sides. Spiders, other than fleas, don't have a huge amount of potential for flanking. So I don't expect to have a f small raiding force going around the sides trying to get into Stuart's base from the front, other than maybe a few fleas. We could possibly see a bunch of fleas going out there, but at the moment it looks like Captain Nutbar isn't even focusing on building units at all. They just want to break the siege. So I'm going to get out of this soft contain, which it's more of a control of the center. It's not really so much a contain. Captain Nutbar is perfectly free to go out the sides. But it seems like they want to make sure to stop Stuart from be able, being able to push too far forward. And I would say they're actually succeeding quite well. Stuart losing a lot of bandits. Holy crap, nothing for Stuart. All these bandits dead for Captain Upbar. And looking at the attrition right away, Captain Upbar has already taken away 600 metal worth of units that Stuart built with basically nothing taken from them. They lost a couple fleas earlier on. That entire fight was so one-sided that Stuart would probably be best leaving or taking the center, like falling back a bit, taking center, taking a more defensible position. At this point, they've already forced Captain Upbar to construct about it's like 500 metal worth of defenders. Like The thing is, these defenders, yeah, killing the units that Stuart built paid for the defenders, but that's it. Like, Captain Upbar has invested all of this money into these defenses, which have paid for themselves, yes, but they're also here. So, Stuart 98, like, they can go around that, they can go behind that, they could invest in a few rogues to take it from afar, they could invest in a few dirt bags to distract it so that bandits can get in, like, these defenses here, there's just a lot of defenses in one area. I mean, they could switch off into well, Firewalkers. Actually, they could switch up into Firewalkers. They have quite the metal advantage as it is. 
Switching off to Jubbot Factory to build a Firewalker to burn all this stuff up. That's possibly overkill at this stage in the match, but it's something to consider within the next five minutes. However, it looks like Stuart probably better off retreating. At this point, Captain Upar has managed to force a retreat, as they should. But that should be fine. I mean, Stuart can still regroup in the center. The thing is, Captain Upar is doing a slow push. But, as I mentioned before, this is entirely static. Like, most of Captain Upbar's forces here are static. All these defenders here? Like, a thousand metal worth of defenders plus a caretaker. That's... Oops. That is... A lot of money spent in what can only affect this tiny area of map. Like, just this. This is pretty much all it can affect. Whereas, Stuart 98 has a bunch of mobile units. And yeah, they don't have a huge amount of mobile units. They only have like 500 metal or 400 metal worth of bandits plus their commander. But they have a massively healthy economy. A little bit bad on the energy, actually. The excess isn't great. But they have otherwise a healthy economy other than the energy issues. And they've got most of the territory. Even if they retreat, they still have pretty much gotten the northwest. They're taking the eastern side as well. They've put a, a, a small watcher post on the southeast. So they're looking to take that. I mean, Stuart also has the center, and that's the most lucrative part of the map. So Stuart is way ahead. The only thing Captain Upar has is the slow push and, of course, the reclaim that they get from it. But really, Stuart 98, all they really needed to have is more energy to begin with. Honestly, at this point, I would actually recommend wind generators. I realize it's 0.3 to begin with, but with all this metal being excessed, anything, like getting the wind generators quickly enough, would still be worth it. It's a bit of a gamble, but... It would still probably be worth it. As it is, Stuart about to lose their commander, and if they do, that'll spell the end. If they lose their commander right now, they have all this metal that they won't be able to spend that's currently excessing. They have the energy economy as well, That and for commanders, that's bigger. It's six energy and four metal. So if the commander dies, they're one more solar plant behind rebuilding their economy enough to be able to use that metal. And at it... As it stands, they are getting more solar plants, and they do have enough queued up to be able to use the metal they are currently generating. But still, the power plants didn't come up early enough compared to the metal extractors, and I don't know if Stuart expected to actually keep as many metal extractors as they have. At this point, though, they do have a strong economy, they do have a strong presence, but Captain Nutbar, all this reclaim is being used. They have enough energy that they can, with the intermittent reclaim, use that reclaim. It's not huge, mostly it is being used to make defenses and push forward. But, still, Captain Upbar's got a fairly strong position in the center. They only have a strong position in the center. The corners can easily be taken by Stuart, there's no problems there. The problem is just that, at the moment, Stuart can only assist their build so much, they can only use their metal so much. It's fairly good right now, it's about 25 metal into the factory on top of whatever else they built, though the commander should really get repaired, because my goodness, if that thing goes down, Stuart is still losing 500 metal easily, on top of the fact that they still need to build one extra power plant if that happens. Because, like I said, there will be two further energy behind compared to metal. As it is, though, it looks like it might, might be a bit of a moot point, with Hermits going over to the southeast side of the map to take out Captain Nutbar's... or to take out Stuart's forces, Captain Nutbar should be able to take this no problem. And like I said, as it is, Captain Upbar getting a lot of the reclaim that is helping them actually be in a strong position. Stuart did manage to destroy quite a bit of metal worth of Captain Upbar's units, but all of that was reclaimed by Captain Upbar. Every single point, of, every single unit of metal that was broken in that fight was taken by Captain Upbar. So, given all this stuff here, 3,000 metal, 40% of that is still about 1,200 metal. So Captain Upbar just got 1,200 metal for free. I mean, that's basically 10 metal extractors running of this size, running for a minute. That's quite a jump. So that's one big weakness right now. However, Stuart is in a position where they could set up a fairly large reclaim field to take back if they don't lose the convict. They need to make sure not to lose the convict, which is going to be really tough. That... Is that... That's not manual dodging, is it? That's, that's automated dodging. Still, they should be able to keep that alive. The shields... Are they they are they are healthy enough. The shields are healthy enough, they can block another shot coming in, but the convict can live, is building a caretaker. That's a goodish idea. I don't always approve of caretakers used for reclaim, but in this case it'll probably work fine. There is enough of a force up front. I mean basically if the caretaker survives then it's fine, but I kinda would go for just the worker right now. The caretaker could take a little while, honestly. 
I mean, it's working out, though. That one outlaw is making it work out. Holy crap. And the rogues as well. Very good choice of the rogues. The unit composition here I like. Coming out of Captain Upar, though, I also say they're going for a nice unit composition. The one thing I would say that would be super useful right now is the recluse. Get a few recluses and you are in... Oh, that's why. Get a few recluses and you are in business. Because the thugs get hit easily. The outlaw would get completely wrecked. The... Actually, as it is, the outlaw is already getting wrecked, but still. That would be a great way to go. And then the racketeer would also have a hard time dealing with this, as racketeers have come in... But yeah, getting through Captain Nubbar's forces right now is not really the way to go. Stewart's got a great position they can set up from. Getting the gunship plant's an interesting idea. I don't know why they go for... I, I mean, I feel like that's a force of habit. Like, gunship doesn't have a lot of great options, especially with all of these defenders here. It has brawler, and I imagine that's what we're going to see coming out from Stewart. It's just... Brawlers are kind of limited. And they're going to be countered by tarantulas fairly quick. I would personally have gone for a jump out factory, get a firewalker. Just do that. Because with the firewalker, you can just burn up all of these defenses. This is exactly the thing firewalker excels against. Captain Upper, on the other hand, slowly pushing in and going for a crab as well to solidify that slow pitch. They are not really concerned about the corners. They're not concerned about all this reclaim right now, which is a bit of a mistake. I would like to see these workers here move a little bit out, like just, just to here, because I think they can take it without losing too much. Yeah, they have to walk like one unit length over, but reclaiming that should be fairly safe. I'd like to see that Captain Upar has plenty of energy to use that. They have plenty of caretakers in their factory. They could easily use that money. Whereas Stuart, on the other hand, still actually hasn't built up enough power plants to deal with all the metal. They've been accessing metal this, this entire game. They've been using some of their production, but a lot of their production recently has been on factories, and the gunship plant just now is coming online. With rapiers to boot. I'm guessing we're going to see some phoenixes coming up from the... No? No? Thunderbirds and ravens. Okay, that's a bit more typical. I just find it interesting they're going for disabling options, especially since they already have racketeers, rather than going for, like I said, a firewalker. Or going for a... I guess missile silo is kind of out of meta. What else could you go for right now? I mean, Phoenix is generally considered kind of weak. I would not use it against all these defenders. If anything, I wouldn't use any air force against this. That's what I mean. Like, I don't see an air force being all that useful here. I see... I see ground artillery being useful. I don't really see racketeers especially being useful, but ground artillery that's not racketeers, yeah, that would be fine. The felon going forward here is a mistake. This, as a rule, do not use felons against heavy units. The felon being put forward like that, yeah, that's that's not surprising. I don't know why Stewart pushed that forward. Captain Upper is in a very solid position. They're taking the southeast. They're probably going to be able to raid the southeast here with the Stinger in a few well, not even a few minutes, probably in a minute or so, we're going to see them raid that. Captain Upper's metal right now. They've got the reclaim going. Or some of it, anyway, from time to time. I I really would like to see one of these weavers just go down here and take all this metal. Their commander is taking a lot of it, which is still good. And it does have an extra nano lead, so it does have 15 build power. That's still really good. Captain Upper needs that, and they're making great use of it. Stuart 97, Stuart 98, on the other hand, they have plenty of money. They have a fair amount of build power. They have no energy. They've been at 33 energy for the last five minutes. Now, just finally getting another Solar Collector. But at this stage in the game, I would honestly recommend just building a Fusion Plant. Like, just build a Fusion Plant to focus on that. You're not getting raided that hard right now. You have enough of a defensive force that you could probably survive an attack. Actually, I would recommend it, like, a couple minutes ago when there was a much stronger defensive force. But, I mean, between the Thunderbird and all these forces here, there shouldn't be a massive problem. And the Roach on top of that. There should not be a problem dealing with... Ooh, that's unfortunate. The Roach managing to get hit. Nicely done. Captain Nutbar. Stopping a damaging but not devastating roach attack. Hermits have too much HP. Roaches... Yeah, roaches deal a little bit too little damage. They, they leave them alive at 200 HP. But yeah, between the Thunderbird and the forces that are roving... Oh, they were roving around the map. Now they're just in Stuart 98's base. This is kind of where it's going to fall apart. Stuart 98's going to get wrecked around the corners. Captain Upper is just going to raid all this stuff out. And there's not a whole lot of defenses, and there's certainly not a lot of units to really command any respect around there. But yeah, I would have a couple minutes ago just built a fusion plant, just given the energy deficit. At the moment, that was working out, though. We do see that Stuart does have enough energy to be able to use all the metal. They're... I mean, they're apparently working on it. It's 
kind of weird that's not working out, actually, considering all the build power being used. But they are also running out of metal. That's one thing, though. This All this metal has never really been used. There's probably going to be two or 3,000 metal worth of excess, at least. Now, with Captain Upper, on the other hand, they didn't really access all that much. They're starting to get close, and they do have storage just in case either that or just in case their commander dies. Because their commander is right in front of this firebase over in the southeast. It's not being raided out directly. The western side is being raided out very effectively. Stuart losing all of that, basically because they didn't have enough units when they had a massive economic advantage, and now they've lost that advantage. Captain Upper, on the other hand, with a... I mean, they've gained the advantage. And with strong center control as well, the slow push really really worked. There wasn't a whole lot of punish, not a lot of artillery. Like, no switch to artillery, because Shieldbot is okay for dealing with that. I mean, a Thug Law force marching through a line of defenders like this would work well. That would work wonders. We didn't see that either. We saw a Thug Law force raiding around the side, but we didn't see one just trying to march through here as soon as this old defender setup came up. And I realized at the, that time in the game, Thug Law was a little bit difficult to build up, but as it was, Stuart already had, like, 20 metal per second. Thugs are 180 metal. That would have taken 9 seconds per thug. And, like, another, like, 12 seconds for an outlaw. So within a minute, they would have had, like, 3 or 4, like, 3 thugs, couple outlaws. That would have been enough. In the time that it took for Captain Updar to build all those defenses, they would have had the thugs and outlaws. It would have been over here. The Captain Updar would have started to push the last few defenders... And the Thug Law Force could have just come in, rolled over the defenders. Because the outlaws in particular would wreck the defenders completely. The thugs could just block the fire. And, yeah, they'd be able to tear it apart. I mean, three thugs is, a, is cutting it a little close, I will admit. But as it stands, nothing of the sort even started to come up. And now at this point, Captain Upar basically has control over the western side. They have control over the center very solidly. Come to think of it, I'm not entirely sure why Stewart went for what they did without either setting up a backup plan or having, like, the Thug Law already kind of starting up just in case defenses came up. I guess you wouldn't necessarily prepare for that, but clearly they were playing a fast strategy. Like, they wanted fast center control without too much behind it. Whereas Captain Upbar went for slow push center control and got it eventually. Largely because not much really got in their way. Like, they had the Reclaim to work with. They worked with the Reclaim really well. They had roughly economic parity most of the game. They used all the metal they had, where Stewart's now finally not accessing, but Captain Upper actually is accessing, ironically. But still, they that was the case. And now Stewart finally getting some damage on the factory, but it's a little bit late. Captain Upper's already got quite the force on the map. It's going to be a bit tricky right now. I think the factory might even go down. There's not much defending it. The Venom is... Coming up as a bit of a threat. I, yeah, Oh, it will come up. It's not even being targeted. That Venom is going to take out these rapiers no problem. Between the Venom and the Defender, these rapiers will not take out the factory. There's no way that's happening. And on top of that, with Stuart basically losing all of their economy over to the southeast, I'm not sure what the end game is with these rapiers. I really don't, because the thing with the rapiers is that they're not lasting very long, just due to the fact that they're strafing. The, this here... That should probably have been turned off. The air strafing option here, it is sometimes useful, but when you're dealing with static defenses nearby, it's caused three of them to die. Like, there would be five rapiers here. I don't think that Venom would have been built. I guess the factory did go down, but I don't think the Venom would have been built if the rapiers were not strafing. That's just a thing to bear in mind, is watch that strafing state, because it's, it's important. It can get your rapiers especially killed. Same with Banshees. Brawlers, I don't even know if they have it on by default anymore, but yeah, Rapiers, it's easy to get them killed if you put them too far forward, or if they get too far forward into defenses because of that. And that's the only reason these Rapiers have been dying, honestly. It's kind of sad, actually. Still, even without their main base, Captain Upbar doesn't care. They've got plenty of money if they want to rebuild, and I... I don't see them doing that right now, but ah, here it is. They got the rebuild already in the southeast. So it's even closer for reinforcements. And they basically have Stuart 98 on the ropes. There's not much that Stuart can do. Captain Upbar's basically pushed them back to their base. Left them with no money. And... I'm not sure what Stuart's trying to build other than the Racketeers. The Racketeers make sense. Everything else feels like they're just on repeat. But yeah, I'd say the mistake really came back to 
not realizing that because the hard push was coming in that both would be a hard push and you had to kind of deal with the fact that Stuart, that Captain Nubar will slowly come at you, but you won't be able to stop them easily. So either counter the slow push with artillery or a thug law ball, or solidify the rest of the map. Retreat slightly, solidify the rest of the map, and then establish a strong contain over here. Rather than trying to establish a weak contain over here. By doing that, you end up with a situation where the contain is actually fairly effective. Like, you don't have this situation where the push continues along as a hard push all the way through to your base. You instead have a situation where the push, it got part of the way there, but then it had to stop. And then you have more time to build artillery to break the hard push in the first place. But yeah, as it is, there's not much more to be said. Captain Nutbar basically just they played a strong defensive game. I mean, they played a slow push, not even a strong defensive game, they played a so slow push game. They played a game that Every They had to take it inch by inch, but every inch they took, they kept. They never lost ground. And that's the key thing. Where Stuart went really ham to take as much ground as possible, but didn't have anything behind it to hold on to it when they had to fall back inevitably. Or at least the way that Nutbar played, it worked out to be inevitable. What is the excess metal? Oh, wow. It's actually about the same. Stuart 98, throughout the entire game, ended up accessing a grand total of 6,400 metal. Captain Nutbar, at the very end, when they lost their factory, started to excess metal, and accessed, within that time, about 5,000 metal. But up to that point, only about 1,000 metal. So for the majority of the game, Stuart 98 was about... Well, started out about 500-ish metal behind, and then just continued with a difference that kept climbing. It looked like the minimum difference at any time was about... Like, once we started getting excess from Nutbar, somewhere on the order of 500 metal. After that, it just kept climbing and climbing and climbing until it was roughly 5,000 metal discrepancy in terms of what units could have been built. And 5,000 metal worth of units is massive. That's a couple striders. Like, that is three crabs. That is a huge difference between the number of units that Stuart could have built and the number of units Stuart built. I mean, looking at metal produced, Stuart has massive metal production advantage. Metal used, it was almost even. Same with unit, I mean, unit value is almost even, although admittedly... Stuart did lose quite a few at the beginning. Stuart managed to build quite a few, didn't manage to keep a lot of them, though. That's the thing. Like, it was very efficient of Captain Nutbar the way they basically played the, d the defense game, the hard push game. They didn't have to face any massive art opposition with artillery or heavy assault units. They didn't have to deal with a whole lot of opposition to their reclaim. It was just there. Stuart fed him a bit of metal and then fell back a bit, but then didn't have anywhere to fall back to... This is a nice rating. I like the rating on the sides. That was great. I mean, setting up at the sides was good. The problem was there was never a pincer from there to take out the center, and there also wasn't really a whole lot to stop the push in the first place. Nothing to really suppress this part of the map, this firebase over here. Everything was just allowed to be there, and that provided a great staging ground for Captain Nutbar to keep going. So yeah, Captain Nutbar, good job with setting up a slow push, because that is tough to do. Especially in this game. There's a lot of things that really work against it, and it didn't end up becoming a problem, I guess. I'd love to see how Captain Nutbar actually handles it if there is artillery. Like, what is their response? Because I don't know, if, do they normally play this style? I haven't seen them play a whole lot recently, so I'm not sure if they've adopted a hard push style as a rule on Living Lands, or if it was just this matchup, or if it was just against Stuart. But I'd be curious to see what happens if they were to play a hard push style against someone who went for artillery, or did go for a heavier assault force and tried to break down the hard push. Anyway... That is that. So the next match is going to be yet another 3v3 because I've been getting a lot of requests for this. It is going to be RAR, North Chilean G, and Tubal Suez 5 against Anarchid, Mr. Casanova, and Catastrophe on Red Comet. That'll be up in a couple of minutes, so stay tuned.